place alone Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord, praise the Lord With all of my heart, with all of my strength With all that I have I will sing that everything that has breath Praise the Lord Is the river that flows unrestrained from your heart Sing again, there's a river There is a river that flows unrestrained from your heart Canyons of mercy so deep I can never depart Father, your wonders are in us. Open my eyes to believe. Awake my soul. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Yeah. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. With all of my heart. With all of my strength, with all that I have, I will sing that everything. Here we go. That has breath, praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. Oh. Come on, praise the Lord. Oh. Morning by morning. Faithfulness shines like the sun Heaven's on fire Heaven's on fire Alive with the brilliance of Yeah Your wonders are in us Open my eyes to believe Awake my soul Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord Praise the Lord With all, with all of my heart With all of my strength With all that I have I will sing that everything That has breath Here we go! Praise the Lord
is none, none like you. Who can know my heart like you do? For all creation sings your song, and I will join with
We can run straight into your arms unafraid Cause every time we're met by love We can lift our hands to heaven full of faith Cause every time we Yeah. 
Let's just remain standing. I feel like the Holy Spirit's going to increase. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you're already here. We're so grateful that you're already here. But, Lord, we're saying tonight we're hungry for more. We're grateful for what we have. But, Lord, we know we're only scratching the surface of what can be. And so, Lord, tonight I really believe those prophetic words spoken over the Central Coast and over California, I believe it's tonight that those those are going to be fulfilled. And so, Lord, I just pray to charge right now the atmosphere with great faith, but not only great faith, but great expectation. Lord, something's about to shift. Something's about to break loose. And Lord, we just say tonight is the night. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're, gonna, we're just going to stay standing for a minute because I feel like God wants us to do a, a prophetic act. I said this last night, but I'm going to say it again because I'm so full of expectancy right now. Uh, uh, Chuck Pierce and Dutch Sheets were here in November, and they, and they brought a prophetic word uh, to, the, to the West Coast, uh, to the Central Coast, and to this area. And they said, they said that uh, this is the West Gate. Right here in California, right now, this is the West Gate. And, and uh, Chuck prophesied that the glory is at the gate. But he also said there's a battle at the gate. And he said if we do our job, as we, and if we war at the gate, and we begin to declare, and, 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 we're, and we're, we're, we're faithful in warring, that, that the gate's going to be open and the glory is coming and that battle's going to be won. And there's a great battle because he said the west gate's got to open first and the west wind will begin to blow and it will begin to blow the glory up and down the coast of California and then across the nation and around the world. And so we had an assignment, we have an assignment to open the gates. 
And I feel like that, we, that tonight we're going to open the gates. I believe there's enough faith in the room tonight to open the gate. How many are with me? It says, it says in Psalms 24 and in verse 7, it says, lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. It says, who is the King of glory? It says, the Lord strong and mighty. Come on, you guys. It says, lift up your heads, O you gates. <laughs> lift up, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord Almighty is the King of glory. I believe tonight we're going to have an encounter with the King of glory, but also the God Almighty is coming in tonight. Now, I want to do something tonight. I want to, I want to battle at the gate tonight because I know it's time to open the door. And there's enough faith, there's enough power in this room tonight. We can storm heaven. And so I want us to shout and I want us to roar at the gate, at the west gate tonight. Let's do it right now. Come on. We command the gate to be open in the name of Jesus. Open up ancient doors. Open up gates. Jesus, Lord, we open the doors tonight. We open the gate tonight. Gates be open. Clean white, clean white doors of heaven. We call down our inheritance. We call the prophetic words into being right now in the name of Jesus. King of glory, come in. King of glory, come in. Lord God Almighty, come in tonight. Into this place tonight. To the West Gate, here in the Central Coast, we're here in Santa Maria tonight. Santa Maria is giving birth tonight to another Jesus movement. Another move of God is happening. There's a birthing taking place tonight. Tonight is the night. This is what's been prophesied. This is here. It's here. It's now. It's now. It's here. We receive right now. Come, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. King of glory. King of glory. We open the ancient doors, the gates, the west gate. Be open in the name of Jesus. And be open in Jesus' name. Lord God Almighty, enter into this room. Enter into the coast. West wind begin to blow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Let's begin to praise Him. Let's begin to praise Him that the battle's been won. Let me praise you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What's what's happening right now in the heavenlies. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We welcome you. We welcome the King of glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Whoa. Now, Lord, fall afresh. Fall afresh upon us right now. Lord, we're asking for the winds to blow, but not only the winds to blow, but Lord, we're asking for the fire of God but tonight. Lord, just let it come in any way you want it to come. Lord, we welcome, we welcome, Lord. We welcome the King of glory into this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Keep thanking Him. How many of you know what opens the gate is thanksgiving? Come on, let's begin to thank Him for what just happened. It starts, it starts with thanksgiving. Then we move into hunger for more. Combine that with expectation and there's nothing that can stop the Lord. So Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. By faith, we step in to the promises of God. We choose to believe. Tonight, we choose to believe all those prophetic words that have been spoken over Santa Maria that has not yet been fulfilled. Why not tonight? Why not here? 
Why not now? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to increase. So I heard, just heard the Lord said that he's raising up tonight revivalists and revival uh, strategies to take a city. And I just want you to know, if you, I, I just raise your hands, put your hands up into the glory and just grab it because there's a new realm of glory that's just being released right now. Lord, raise up your end time army that's here tonight. Lord, raise up revivalists tonight in this place. Lord, let your power come upon us in a fresh and new way. And Lord, I pray for every hungry person who's been crying out and saying, here I am, use me. Here I am, send me. I pray that fire would fall upon them right now. A fresh fire from heaven would come upon them right now. So Lord, let it come right now in Jesus' name. Just begin to take more. How much do you want tonight? What did you come expecting tonight? How much of heaven do you want? How much of God do you want tonight? How much of the Holy Spirit do you want tonight? You gotta tell him. He wants to hear your voice. Here we are, Lord. Use us. Here we are, Lord. Send us. Lord, give us the strategies to take a city, to take a state and a nation. Strategies to take your world for the kingdom, for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now let the glory just begin to fall. Let the glory just begin to fall in this place. Those of you watching by streaming, let that glory go through the screen. And let it touch you in that room where you're watching right now, wherever you are around the world. Just take it right now. It's not, it's not limited to us to a, here, into this space. But to every hungry heart that's crying out, you can have it. So Lord, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you that the gate is open. John said, I looked and I saw a gate standing open in heaven. <laughs> And he said, then I heard a voice that said, come up here. And I want to tell you something. Not only is God coming down, but it's a season. He's taking us up. He's taking us up. He wants to show us what's going to take place. Lord, we thank you for an increase of revelation that's happening right now. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Some of you lost your vision tonight. You're getting your vision back. Lord, we just bless what you're doing tonight in the area of seeing, in the area of faith, and in the area of revelation. This is 2020. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you're opening our eyes. Thank you for clear vision. Lord, thank you for what's happening right now. We, we receive it right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I want to tell you something. Something's shifting. Something is changing. Dutch Sheets said, uh, uh, and uh, Chuck Pierce said, in March, when you see the cherry blossoms begin to bloom, that's when it's going to happen. People, it's now. This is a now world word. He said you can't be distracted. You've got to get rid of distraction. And, and, the, and the Bible said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst. Come on, because they're the ones that are going to be filled. How many are hungry tonight? How many revivalists are in the house tonight? Again, God is raising up his army. Come on, it's time to run to the, to the front lines, run to the battle. No longer are we going to be chased by the enemy, but we're going to run after them. You know, Charlie was talking about Michael the archangel. You know, and with his sword, like a helicopter. I saw that during worship. I saw a vision of that during worship. And I believe that Michael is at the gate also, battling and fighting with us. But he needs our help. And so, Lord, we're not giving up. We're not going to miss our time. And we say we were born for a time such as this. We know the prophets at all long to see the day that we're living in. And, Lord, they prophesied about it. But you chose us. And so here we are. Here we are. Your sons and your daughters. And we're going to prophesy. Oh, we're going to advance your kingdom. And, Lord, we thank you for the shift that is happening even right now in this place. We thank you for the glory realm, a thickening of the glory that we've never yet 
experienced have not walked into yet. It's a different glory. It's a, it's a higher degree of glory. It's a thicker glory that is coming. And in the glory, oh, in the glory, like we were singing tonight, there's so many angels in the glory. Those ministering spirits that were sent to battle with us for this great harvest that's upon us. So Lord, we thank you for strategies from heaven. Lord, we thank you for your kingdom is coming upon us as it is in heaven right here tonight in Santa Maria. And we say we'll never go back. We're never looking back. We're going forward. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'll just open your hands, open your arms. And I really feel like the word that came was that last night or today about the, uh, the 27 golden eggs. That was last night. I knew that. I'm testing you. <laughs> the Lord's releasing that tonight. So let it come right now. Lord, those prophetic golden eggs. Lord, we just receive it right now. And Lord, we just say you're going to show us what the, what the vineyard didn't see. And you're going to give us what the vineyard didn't have. And Lord, we thank you for that word and we receive that. And I believe it's being birthed tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I just don't feel like shifting from here yet. If, the, if you can feel the Holy Spirit on you right now in a strong way, I want you just to come to the front. If something is happening on you, in your body, in your spirit, I want you to come to the front. There's something about coming to the front. There's something about moving. And I want to tell you something. I believe there's a great host in heaven that's watching right now. Those who've gone before us that are in heaven, that great cloud of witnesses are watching down on this meeting right now. And I'm telling you they're rejoicing in heaven right now because the strategies of heaven are being released in this place tonight. Something is shifting. We're not alone. There are more angels in this building than there are people right now. Heaven is watching tonight. And so, Lord, I'm asking right now, Lord, just to begin to mark this. Those that came forward especially, begin to mark them tonight. Now, God's going to begin to mark you. He's going to put his mark on you. He's going to put his seal or, or his tattoo, so to speak. It's God's putting a tattoo on, on you. And he said, this one's mine. Lord, we thank you that you're raising up soldiers. You're raising up army. Lord, you're raising up generals and chiefs. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to just begin to thicken his presence on you, to intensify his glory on you right now. Lord, I'm asking, Lord, that you would begin to release more power. Lord, we need power in the church today. More power. Thank you, Lord. He's all over you. Holy Spirit's all over you. Take more. In Jesus' name, power, 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 power. Yes, come on, just take more. Take more. You were born for a time such as this. Lord, just begin to take it. Lord, I'm going to ask the Lord to release angels to help me begin to minister right now. You're going to feel people touching you. It's not, it's not even people. It's, just, it's those ministering spirits right now that are marking you for this kingdom of God is at hand. Whoa. Take more in Jesus' name. Take more in the name of Jesus. Take more. Mighty warrior. Mighty warrior. Strong in battle. Take more. Take more in Jesus' name. You're born for this. Take more in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this general in Jesus' name. Just take more. Power, 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 power. Take more right now in Jesus' name. Take it. It's yours. The Lord is marking you. He's sealing you right now. You're his own. These are the ones he's chosen. The Bible says we're all called, but few are chosen. And He's chosen you. It's not an accident that you're here tonight. So Lord, we thank you for your power. We thank you for your glory. 
Thank you, Lord. We're not turning back. We're not going backward. We're going forward. Thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, begin to release revelation. There's going to be an impartation of revelation being released right now and strategy. Some of you have never prophesied. You're going to begin to prophesy. Some of you have never dreamed dreams. You're going to begin to have dreams. Some of you are going to begin to have visions. Some of you are going to get the gift of word of knowledge. Some of you are going to have angelic visitations. Come on, this is what we need. This is what the revival is going to look like. This is what the move of God is going to look like. Partnering with, partnering with heaven. So Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. Everything that you have, we want. We don't want second best. Lord, we're not after the silver. We're going for the gold. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Lord, begin to fill them. Fill them afresh. Fill them afresh. Right now, power, power, power. Fill them, Lord. Fill them. Fill them in Jesus' name. Fill them. Fill them. Here it comes. Here it comes, you guys. Here it comes. He's pouring out right now. There's new wine. See, he's been reworking a, a wine skin, a new wine skin in us. So, Lord, begin to pour in new wine. It's time for the wine. It's time for the new wine. Just take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it over here. Take it in Jesus' name. Take it. In the name of Jesus, signs and wonders. Over in this section, there's like angels of signs and wonders. Like, 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 like swirling over here. Lord, we just we just take it right now. Power evangelism. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You've come here this week. Not to hear a good message, but you came for an impartation. And I want to tell you something. If you came for an impartation and you're hungry, you've been longing for this. Tonight's the night. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Now grab your sword. You're in his army. Grab your swords. Begin to wield the sword. The enemy can't stop you any longer. The gate has been opened tonight. I believe with all my heart. The King of Glory has come in. The Lord Almighty is here tonight. It's time to fight. It's time to war for California. It's time to war for our cities, for our schools, for our neighborhoods. We don't have to take a back seat any longer. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you so much. We've been waiting for this. We've been anticipating tonight for a long time, since November especially, when that word was released. By faith, Lord, we take hold of it in Jesus' name tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Holy Spirit, more increase. Even more. Now, the Lord doesn't just want to fill you, but He wants to bring you into overflow. It's a season and it's a time of overflow. More than enough. So let it come. Let overflow just begin to happen. Overflow. Let it come. And remember, it comes from your, your belly. <laughs> overflow. Let it come. Let it begin to spring up. And not just fill you, but overflow. We're, no, we're in the season of overflow, of more than enough. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, God.
thank you, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing. And last night when Charlie was sharing and he said for this place, you're going to see what the vineyard didn't see and you're going to get what the vineyard didn't get. And it reminded me of the when John Wimber died, I forget when it was, 20-something years ago, Rick and I and another couple drove down to Anaheim from here and we went to his memorial service. And on the way, the four of us were praying and we said, God, would you give us a double portion of what John Wimber had? And then after the service, we went to a restaurant that he went to a lot, El Torito down in Yorba Linda. And as we ordered our meal, we sat down, we ate our four meals, the waitress came, took away our dishes, and two minutes later, a waiter came with the exact four dishes that we had just ate. And, we, and he set up before us and we said, we just ate, they just took our meal. And then we realized that was a double portion and it was just what we had prayed for. Yes, come on. And so last night when Charlie said, you're gonna see what the vineyard didn't see and you're gonna get what the vineyard didn't get, I don't know why God's doing it, but he's chosen this region for a purpose. He's chosen a lot of places, but we humbly say, Lord, we'll see what they didn't see and we will take what you wanna give us, God, whatever it is, Lord, give us that double portion. Would you release it on the center coast? Would you release it even now, Lord? We take it, we receive from you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We want everything that's in your heart, God. What do you want, Jesus? Why did you make this place exist? Why are we here, Lord? We want what you want, God. We say yes. such a time as this, we say yes. things Chuck Pierce prophesied that that God's gonna just come 
during this season and rearrange our service. He's going to rearrange worship. You know, I'm tired of doing it man's way, our old ways. I'm going to start doing it God's way. Being led by the Spirit. give you permission to rearrange sometimes that's a test when the Lord wants to break out are you going to fall back on what's comfortable what you know where you've always done it Have your way, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, you guys can head back to your seats. Because I know the Lord has so much for us tonight. This is just the appetizer. God's about to serve us a meal tonight. None of us are going to be the same. Thank you, Lord. I love when his presence comes. I love when he gives us words and meets with us. And we're here for him. And without him showing up, why are we even here? It's pointless and a waste of time. But we love you, Jesus. And we honor you, Father and Holy Spirit. We thank you for your presence. And we ask that you would even increase as we shift gears, Lord, that you would shift us even into a deeper place with you. We love your presence, Lord. And we're, we're blessed tonight to have... Ed and Ruth Silvosa and Stacy, yes, Stacy will introduce them properly in a little while. But before she does that, I'm going to invite Julie to come up. And she's going to share a couple pieces to what God's been doing. And as she's coming, um, I think most of you know we are an apostolic center here with, uh, Rick counted up, 22 ministries that are housed here in this place and all different Can kinds of things. Can we put that up, That's, that picture? And one of them, I yelled in my throat into horses. One of them is the House of Prayer. And um, actually, March 23rd, which is a Monday from 4 to 45, 4 to 445, we're going to be doing a House of Prayer intro here. If you want to come to that and then come to our regular Monday night service. And then after that, we're going to have a House of Prayer set. And after that, we'll be doing auditions. If you're a singer or, or a musician, you want to come to this because the Lord wants to build his House of Prayer here. It's a regional House of Prayer, not just for this place, but it's for this region. And his heart really is to build it up. You know the scriptures, my house shall be called a house of prayer and he wants to build it up so if you're um, gifted in singing playing an instrument or if you like to prayer lead or we also have sets where you don't need to sing which is my case and I read the scripture for an hour and it's powerful so if if you have a love for the word of God and you'd like to come and just sit for an hour with music in the background and read the word we want you to so come out to this but um, Julie I'm so blessed to have her here she helps lead the house of prayer with me and she's just going to share a few things yes hello hello everyone um, well, this is so significant to me because I was there in Kansas City in the early 80s with Mike Bickle. Uh, I remember when John Paul Jackson, Bob Jones, and Paul Kane were all there. Jill Austin came. And I remember them be talking about Shiloh. 
And a man named Bob Scott actually uh, kind of was the scribe and put their words together. And then it kind of fell off the radar for a while, but it came back on the radar uh, in the early 2000s. And in the early 2000s, I also started to have dreams about Shiloh. And a friend of mine, Pamela Stead, she gave me the original um, documents on Shiloh. And uh, when she gave them to me, it wasn't on the internet because it was typewritten. <laughs> Um, and so I move here, you know, Paul Kane's here. I'm like, God, then Stacy and Wesley come and I'm like, then Shiloh, we begin to talk about Shiloh. And a year ago, I, I, cause I didn't know where this was. This is terrible. I, I put it somewhere and we moved and I hadn't seen this document for gosh, probably five years, five or seven. And I asked the Lord, God, where is the original documents of Shiloh? The, not just what we remember, but what was written down. And one day my husband was taking out this huge box of papers. And um, I said, hey, let me just look and see if there's anything in there. And I dipped my hand down and I pulled back this group and there was something there that Walt wanted and he picked it up and there right underneath was the original vision of Shiloh and so I came into the uh, the healing rooms and can you show that picture and I'm telling Cindy Goff who we're in the same uh, office together that's Cindy as I'm telling Cindy I found the original vision of Shiloh, we look out the window, there's a rainbow, and God's up to something, okay? I mean it, okay. Let me share with you what was written down. It is online now, but Paul Kane, uh, he, when he came to Kansas City in November of 1980, Paul received the, the first of a series of divine revelations concerning the establishment of a secluded spiritual resting place and a training center for prophetic ministries. Since that time, it has become known as Shiloh. And so this are, these are some points that the Lord spoke to Paul about, that the presence of God is a tremendous representation of, Sil of Shiloh. The presence of God is to be so remarkable there that prophets, apostles, evangelists, pastors, and teachers will come from all parts of the world just to set and learn and fine tune themselves in such a place. And the Lord said to Paul, he is going to give peace in that place. Shiloh will be a place of his presence and peace. And Shiloh means rest giver or peace giver. The Lord spoke to Paul that Shiloh is a place where God wants people to come apart to rest a while. He wants them to rest and to seek his face. It will be a place where people will discover Isaiah 30 verse 15. And repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. And I love this. Shiloh is going to be a place that is so pure and so holy that God will be spending the night there. Come on. Uh, Paul, the Lord spoke to Paul. I see prophets from all over the land coming to a place like Shiloh and being refurbished, strengthened, and visited by the Lord. All kinds of spiritual Holy Ghost rehabilitation will be employed there. The Lord said uh, to uh, Paul, the Lord is very jealous for his purposes. He is very jealous for his purpose to come forth in the raising up of Shiloh as a place of quietness and peace for his end time leaders. And the Lord said to him, God will send forth some great and wonderful things from Shiloh. 
Out of this place shall come the type of ministries and power packages that will turn the world upside down and bring world evangelism, healing, and deliverance to mankind. Come on. Uh, John Paul, here's some things from John Paul. The Lord began to speak to John Paul about Shiloh about the same time that he began speaking to Paul in the early 80s. Uh, some of the things he spoke to John Paul was that it must be a place that's kept simple and moderate. Uh, for example, um, the uh, m- showing my attribute of restraint for anyone that the Lord would bring to Shiloh to work or live must have a willingness to walk with a servant's heart and humility would be a key to their success. The Lord revealed several visionary characteristics of Shiloh. Uh, He intended to use Shiloh to return an understanding of the fear of the Lord to his people. He intends, I love this part, um, the Lord spoke to John Paul and said that God intends for Shiloh to be a place of prayer. And he says, I will place a cylinder for prayer above it and reveal an open heaven. This spiritual cylinder will provide an open passageway for prayer to arise unencumbered to the throne of God. Uh, And John Paul said the greatest purpose that the Lord revealed to John Paul about Shiloh was that it would be a place where God himself would rest. Uh, I will visit and reveal myself there. The very presence of God will be a tangible expression of Shiloh. Those that God brings there He will bring those to Shiloh that need to be restored and revived in various ways. They will experience a brand new sense of God and a new understanding of his purpose for their lives. And the Lord said to John Paul that God will bring kings, princes, and leaders from nations, leaders from kingdoms and providences to hear my word there. Some will come in secret. Others will come openly. Uh, John Paul said, the Lord said, I will make it a hub, a place of prophetic training and spiritual impartation. The Lord said he would make Shiloh a prophetic gathering place. And, and John Paul had a vision in 1984 about the surrounding area where Shiloh would arise. And he saw many people moving to the surrounding areas of Shiloh. But he saw this radical transformation take place that every house in town was either sold to those that God had sent or previous owners became Christians. And even the banks and and businesses all around Shiloh of the towns eventually became owned and operated by believers. I mean, it's a spreading of evangelism. And then Bob Jones, another prophet of the Lord, uh, was also in the early 80s shown about Shiloh. Um, And Bob said the purpose of a gathering place, which he called uh, the round table of prophets. This would be a gathering to combine revelation that prophets had received from each other. And as they brought these prophetic pieces of the puzzle together, the Lord would reveal a clear picture of what he was saying. 
the Lord told Bob that he wanted to give the church leadership around the world a clear trumpet, a clear word to put to their lips, to blow, to declare, and to proclaim. The round table of the prophets would facilitate this. It was a circular table and it has no distinct top or bottom, front or back. And in terms of prominence, neither will the prophetic round table. Um, it would be a day when the Lord would do away. This is major. It would be a day. When these prophetic round tables begin to spring up, it would be a day when the Lord would do away with the jealousy and competition that plagues the prophets of our day. And remember, this, this was written in the early 80s. So uh, God wants to bring his prophets forward in humility and he wants them to be totally free of any need to be the greatest prophet or to have the greatest revelation. At this round table, a man without humility would be disqualified. It's a heavy word. But God's heart for servanthood and humility. And when I first read this, that's where we begin to see how much of Shiloh was already here and happening because a main purpose of Shiloh was a restoration center, body, soul, and spirit, not only a training center, but for broken and, and, and for prophets and ministers who were burnt out and broken and were in failure. Uh, and it was a prophetic training center it would Shiloh would provide an environment where young developing ministries can be discipled in understanding God's ways they can be held accountable in their character nurtured in wisdom and taught how to properly function in their gifting and calling they will also be trained in the way of prayer and waiting on God to hear his voice. And Paul said, I keep envisioning the plan and the purpose for perfecting of prophets and for the fine tuning of the prophetic ministry. The Lord told Paul, I want to help you and I want to fine tune and train new prophets that have never had their names in national magazines. I want to develop new apostles, prophets, and evangelists that have never been known and mostly have not cared to be known. It was a restoration center. One of the primary purposes is to minister to key men and women who are in positions of responsibility in both the church and secular society. The need for a place where men and women can come and find quietness and solitude in order to wait on God. There is a great need for that. Uh, and and the, Paul said, we are moving towards a time when the hand of God will once again do miraculous things through the lives of his servants. It will be imperative that men renew themselves after extended periods of ministry because the basic nature of the ministry is war and there are always casualties. Another one of Shiloh's goals is to bring down the 
the mortality rate of failed ministries through proper healing and restoration. And this is what Paul Cain said in the early 80s. And this is what he became the first fruits of his very own prophetic word. And Paul said, wouldn't it be wonderful to have a geographic location where ministers who are burned out and those who have fallen could come and be restored in purity and all of that would come back we could show mercy grace and wisdom glory to God that was Paul's own words the Lord spoke to Paul that Shiloh's doors will always be open to senior leaders of churches businesses governmental agencies who need to hear from God through prayer and prophetic ministry uh, as they come that they would also be able to uh, as they're learning and listening to the prophets there would also be counseling that is also available to him so Shiloh is this prophetic training center but the other side of it is a restoration center I, and I love that. Um, uh, the Lord will be rekindled in the hearts of the broken and the weak when they come. And God will be alive and revived in every heart. And Paul said, men need to come apart lest, no, men need to come apart for a while lest they go apart or fall apart. Uh, round table of the prophets. We believe the Lord wants to gather together a selected group of prophetic ministries from time to time in order to discern the times and seasons. The prophetic round table would meet periodically to listen and to listen to one another and share revelations this prophetic round table is to come and set around and fellowship and share visions with other prophetic ministries there will be times of counsel there will be times of thus saith the Lord for in a multitude of counsel there is safety that is where the wisdom will come in okay just a couple more things and it is a place it's a strategy planning center for church and civic leaders this purpose will in some ways overlap the round table of the prophets and it would be a where key leaders of movements or large churches will come to with five or ten of their top men and women for the purpose of taking counsel and strategizing with other prophetic ministries and this would also be a place that civic leaders would come together and do the very same thing these leaders they would come to take counsel on uh, personal is issues uh, ministering uh, ministry directors and church planting strategies Paul Cain said this I saw a satellite set up as if there were great beams and arches and they were setting down upon 12 different leaders in America here is where the spiritual battery gets recharged let's reach out from Shiloh so as they come together these the the leaders the the the, the civic leaders they would they would literally get their batteries recharged uh, it's a, a place where they would reach out and touch leaders of the nations and begin to impart the supernatural knowledge and wisdom and ability and the acts of God God to be charged in their lives and to be activated in their lives Shiloh has no membership it's not a church and once no organizational authority Shiloh is a service to the church 
to the local church in our nation as well as internationally. It desires to see the church walk in a manner that is worthy of her name, the bride of Christ. One more thing that was so awesome, um, and I'm done. So one more thing uh, that they wrote about Shiloh, it must have a good water source. In order to maintain some level of self-sufficiency and enable Shiloh to support, uh, it needs to have good water resources. This is essential. It said Shiloh should include a stream or river that runs year-round. It should include a good underground water supply Shiloh is here. <laughs> I mean, if you learn today, when I read this, I didn't know that there's actually a river that goes. Uh, I can't. That runs underneath this uh, place. And I feel like just being in Kansas City in those early days, and here, I find myself here with my friends and. Just the heart that Rick and Lori have to bless and empower that, that God is raising up that prophetic word that started in Kansas City as being birthed. The, the Campbells tried to move there because it's so burned on their hearts. It never worked out because I believe it was always meant to be right here under the leadership of Rick and Lori Taylor, Stacy and Wesley Campbell, right here in Santa Maria. Thank you, Julie. And um, the vision was birthed in a place of prayer. And I don't know when, when you listen to that vision, like when I listen to the vision, the thing that strikes me the most is, is how much it sounds like Jesus. And there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about Messiah as being named Shiloh. And the scepter will not depart from Judah until Shiloh comes. It's one of the names, actually, the messianic uh, names of, of, of God. And, um, you know, Moses said, I wish all God's people were prophets. And Paul the Apostle said, I... I wish you all spoke in tongues, but even more that you prophesied. For greater is he who prophesies than he who speaks in a tongue. Because the gift of prophecy is for building somebody else up, exhorting somebody, comforting somebody. It's the testimony of Jesus. And, um, and I, I just have a passion to see to see um, people, like a mature man, equal to the measure of the stature of Jesus that operates in the gifts with the same integrity that Jesus operated, Paul operated, Peter operated. And I feel like, um, you know, when I hear it, I feel like this, this doesn't come from humans. This is not coming out. This is coming from heaven. I feel like it's a longing inside of God, you know, where he can talk. He can talk. He can encourage. He can be. <laughs> where he can give leadership to help people. You know, where he can, t he can just walk with man again. You know, he can just commune with his creation again, the way he's always wanted to, you know. And, um, and everything inside of God, when God creates something or it comes from heaven, it never dies. You can take, Daniel can take a 70-year-old prophecy and pray it in. If it comes from heaven, it's, it never dies. 
it just stops being believed. And so if the devil can get us to stop believing the heavenly vision, that's the only time it dies. The word did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith. And I, I feel one of the greatest gifts of the healing rooms is this atmosphere of faith. You can just, every time Rick and Lori get up, you can feel faith, you know? And when you prophesy, it's a, you prophesy according to your faith. And, uh, and so it's a, there are atmospheres that are actually conducive to the testimony of Jesus functioning at higher levels. And so, um, would to God, I, 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 I wish everywhere was a Shiloh. I wish, I wish, like, and I, I always feel like if it really comes from God, it will be multiplied. You can't stop it. You might be a start of something, like maybe there's one house of prayer that starts in Kansas City. I was there when I was in the trailers. I mean, Julie was there on the first day. I just visited. Uh, and Sabrina, and, and they, they live here now. But it can start with 35 people. It can go to 5,000 full-time things. But the real thing is it begins to multiply all over the world until the resting places are found. See, and everything inside of God, it, it talents, gifts. You know, I gave you one. You bring me two more. Bring, you know, I mean, it's, it's inside of who he is to be fruitful. The increase of his government will never end. And so that's what we're looking for. And so we don't want to make this sound like it's just us. Like I'm hoping you're hearing it and I'm hoping you're catching it. I hope those prophecies begin to live in you like they live in me. They live in me. I've, I feel like God, you gave, I want to finish the work you gave me to do. You know, I, 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 want, to, I, want, to, I want to finish it. I want to see it. And so, um, uh, and, and it's, if you want to be great in God's kingdom, learn to be the servant of all. It is so much better to, to launch something and then see other people. Like we always talk about it, that's, it grows greater. But here we are, you know. Uh, start a little prophetic evangelism thing and somebody takes it global and all over the world like Doug. And you start little things that actually just begin to, you know, and not me, anybody, you, all, all, all of us. So um, uh, I'm very happy about that and I feel like that's that God chooses like Bethlehem's birthing places and even in a Bethlehem he'll choose a stable and uh but uh, I want to invite Wesley to come up here and, and it's really pa a passion of mine to see prophecy flourish on the earth um the Bible says out of all the gifts of the spirit to desire more than any other gift the gift of prophecy and it also says, the Bible says, that, um, uh, uh, you know, that, that this, this is going to increase in the last days. I already explained that to you. But, um, so we want to, in a minute, yeah, in one just, minute. Uh, just put up that one slide if you could. And uh, give you a chance, uh, just take a picture of it or text uh, that. And uh, we've even tried, we're, we're creating a, you know, go with, go with us, go with Shiloh, go what's happening to include people that you can be part of what's happening here, there, everywhere. And so that's a mentorship program. So take a picture of that and uh, you'll get a, um, um, a, a audio recording sent to you as well. But uh, it's, it's really about, you know, many, many, many people working together. We want to see, we want to see a catalytic gathering of eagles from around the world and they're going to soar and they're going to they're going to create shifts what you're going to hear tonight is going to be so monumental from dr ed silvoso what god is doing in the earth and he's using the power of the holy spirit to shift uh -huh. and change entire nations yeah. regions yeah. so much it's it's incredible uh -huh. but we're going to hear from him uh -huh. you can Okay. I, I, yeah, and so I just want to say that one, one of the ways I, I, I started a national prophetic roundtable in Canada, which I led for um, probably 20 years. I've passed it on now since I've moved here. But I've also helped launch national prophetic roundtables in the Netherlands, in New Zealand, in uh, Australia, in 
uh, Sweden, or was it Sweden, some other European country, Finland. Uh, but uh, like I really, honestly, this is like something that we have to actually prepare the earth for. It's, it's something that God wants to do. And, and no one ministry will ever answer God's prayers alone. No one person, no one ministry, no one generation will ever, uh, you know, if God is asking for nations, no one ministry is going to do that. You know, if God is praying for the whole world to believe, no one person is going to do that. It is going to take the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, with no spots, no wrinkles, every gift operating in its place, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, every gift operating in, uh, in one harmonious John 17 reality uh, to see the vision that God has for the earth actually to happen, okay? So this is uh, always a we, this is, you know, God views us as a, as a corporate bride, as a corporate body, as a working together army for these things. And, and that's why the emphasis you hear over and over again on the issues of the heart, pride will destroy unity. It will destroy it. it you know, uh, the hand can't say to the foot, I don't need you. There is a way that God thinks that the character is essential to bring about the end goal. And so that's why God works so hard on our character. And that's why the devil works so hard on division and to divide us. And, and so anyway, but it is my pleasure to introduce Pastor Ricardo and his wife Alejandra here tonight. They are pastors in the city of Santa Maria. We've Just heard over and over again about uh, this, this city being a, a, a birthing place, like a Bethlehem. And where are they? Are they still here? Oh, good. P could you please come up here? And now, Pastor Ricardo has planted and founded the largest Hispanic church in this city. This city, you know, is 60% Hispanic. There are more Latinos in this city than any other ethnicity. And so uh, you, w this, it's not going to happen, you know, without all of us working together. There might be a stable, and there, but there's a city, and then there's a nation. And the way God thinks, it's, it's to grow. And I have invited him. Uh, he's a, also, uh, he's, a, he's probably he's known in the city as a pastor. He functions as an apostle, that he oversees a hundred churches, but he, he loves the prophetic. One of his key ministries is he's known in the nations as a prophet, and he travels to many uh, Latino nations and to, to, as a prophet to deliver the word of the Lord. And so this is one of the things why I'm so honored to have you here, uh, you know, to be part of the Shiloh Global launch from this place. We need you. We're going to work together. This is part of the bigger vision of the state of California, California Dreaming. And so anyway, I just wanted you to welcome and uh, uh, the the people here. Uh, 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 Rick was talking about what well, they prophesied about the wind. I believe that it's a prophetic wind. The Bible said in the latter days, God will pour out his spirit in all flesh. And as a, a result, we're going to see a, gener a prophetic generation arise. Our sons and daughters will prophesy. Our young people will see visions. Our elderly people will dream dreams. So, guys, God is going to release a prophetic movement upon the earth. And that's why I believe that Shiloh and other prophetic ministries, but in your case, I, I see that God has raised you up. Not just to train and equip, but to release the heart of the Father to the prophetic uh, generation. I believe that in the past we saw a, a, a prophetic generation like John the Baptist. They were not trained. Equip, they make a lot of damage to the body of Christ. But I believe that God is going to release a wisdom to respect life. And uh, when we see that uh, the hand of the Lord came upon the prophet Ezekiel, he taking me to a Bali. We live in a, a Bali. And, and there's a lot of promises spoken over Santa Maria. And, and I believe that uh, as we were talking with Apostle Ed, uh, Santa Maria represents a birthing place. 
He is an apostle. He represents uh, San Jose. And, and, and I believe that there's going to be a key part of your wisdom as an apostle and, and understanding on how to uh, connect different streams and different uh, movements. I believe God's going to use you in a way to be a father to many younger generations. They have the seal, like John the Baptist, but they didn't have the wisdom. And, and I believe, Rick, that uh, even as I was telling you on, uh, on the restaurant, that uh, the hand of the Lord is uh, notable over your life. And the Lord has used you, not just to break the ground, but uh, to model something and to be a channel that the Lord has been using to birth something new. And, uh, and I believe that this blow of the spirit that is coming is going to cause the bones of different ministries in California to come together. And we, all the bones are different. Some are big, some are tiny, but they're all important to the body of Christ to function correctly. And I believe there's an unity coming in California that is going to cause an awakening that is going to position us to model something new. See, the heart of God, it's, I don't seek my own, but I seek, as you were praying, I want your will. Amen. I want your agenda. I want your heart. I want your plans. So, family, Get ready, because we are about ready to see a great move of God. And, and, and as a minister of the city, mm. uh, among, among uh, Rick and other ministers, we welcome Shiloh, mm. a place for the prophets yeah. to cause a movement in the Central Coast. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I, just as he was saying that, I don't know if you caught that. Ed Silvoso is from San Jose, St. Joseph. We're from Santa Maria, okay, St. Mary, okay, and the seed is coming together, and the apostolic and the prophetic for reformation, and I want to say that the Lord said to Charlie that he would be there when the lightning struck, and today the lightning did not strike in a room, it struck in a region, and the next move of God is Monday to Friday, it is outside the walls of the church, it is coming for transformation, and there was a strike that happened today in this region as a launching pad and as a seed coming together, and I don't think we, sometimes you can miss the Bethlehem moment. When it already is there, we were in the region when the lightning struck and the thunderstorms came and the hail came and the thunder came and we were there. You know, so I feel like this is a very significant evening uh, and we welcome Ed and Ruth Silvoso uh, that have been not only used in revival in uh, the nation of Argentina around the world, but have actually not been sa satisfied simply with revival. You know, the scepter will not depart from Judah till Shiloh comes, the rest giver. David said, a resting place where nations, cities, regions welcome the presence of God and his kingdom comes. This is bigger than anything any of us have ever really almost asked or thought. And I want us to stand and honor uh, Ed and Ruth Silvoso that are going for full-on transformation. Uh, and leaders, world leaders. In transformation. We had a, a wonderful uh, we had a wonderful uh, um, meal together, and uh, <clears throat> Stacy and I went to visit uh, Ed and Ruth Silvoso and their family and their ministry in San Jose. I think it was last April, yep. and um, we sat, and uh, Dr. Ed just 
gave his heart of what God is saying to him over these many decades. And I was absolutely impacted. And I said, this is it. This is it. And then uh, we came to the conference of the Transform Our World in Monterey, uh, <clears throat> just up the coast. And as I listened to all these world leaders that you're going to hear about tonight <clears throat> that are doing transformation, they're changing nations. I said to Stacy, and then I said to others, <clears throat> you know, I remember hearing John Wimber for the first time. It was May 1985 in Vancouver, Canada. And suddenly it was as though, you know, I got my Bible back. I could actually believe it again. And I remember how, how impacting John Wimber was. And he changed the world. And then we were at a conference, a prayer conference, and Stacy prophesied on Peter Wagner. <clears throat> and uh, it was as though God raised him up after John Wimber and the whole apostolic and prophetic. John Wimber brought in, you know, power of evangelism, signs and wonders for everyone. <clears throat> everyone. Peter Wagner, the apostles and the prophets. Yeah. And then, of course, there was, you know, throughout that time, the Revival Alliance and Heidi Bank, the whole explosion of worldwide renewal and revival. But then when I heard this message, I said, this is the, this is the next point of the spear. What you're going to hear tonight is where God's taking the global ecclesia church. And I don't know of anyone more strategic right now in the world, myself, than this couple. Amen. In what they're carrying and how they're seeing the, the, the shift in the, in the understanding of how God does church in the world. And tonight, we want to honor them. And also, afterward, before we go into impartation, we're going to receive an offering. This is the most strategic thing. And I said to uh, Dr. Ed and Ruth, I said, you know, Stacy and I, the Shiloh vision, you know, we want to get behind you. We want to be there to support the prophetic to all these leaders that are, I mean, they're kings, they're governmental, etc. And so that's going to happen. So we're going to just bless you right now before we start and then cut you loose for anything you want. <clears throat> Rick, you start. Julie, come, come lay a hand. First of all, I just want to say uh, we're honored to have you both with us. Yeah. Welcome to our city. Welcome to Santa Maria. And we give you authority. We pass the authority on to you to give the message yeah. the Lord has brought you to bring. Wow. We bless you. Amen. Yes, we welcome you both. We welcome what you have in the spirit, and we're expecting, and we thank you for coming. Thank you. Uh, when we were worshiping, and they asked me if I have a word for you, the Lord told me that he has raised you up as a trumpet oh. to gather not just cities, but nations. Amen. Not just for the purposes of gathering, but uh, with anointing to mobilize my people, says the Lord. I want to use you even to release their purposes in life. And I see that in the next years, it's going to cost you to have a training center. Not the, I see, yes, more schools, schools being developed within your ministry. And those are going to be training schools for how to reign and how to accomplish their purposes. But I also see that God's going to bring a time a visitation to your children. You've been crying out for one of your sons, saying, God, I know that he's ready, and I'm praying that you will bring a visitation in his life. I want you to speak to his heart. And there's a son, I'm working my perfect will in his heart. And your eyes won't be closed before you see the revival that I promised to you years back. And you wow. have a seed of revival that uh, is going to be multiply in the life of many, not just uh, one nation, but different nations and different uh, nationalities. Amen. Amen. We honor you as, as apostles. Mm -hmm. But the Lord said that he's rebirthing something from 27 years ago. Wow. And the heart of the evangelist wow. is, is coming out greater and people are going to start listening to a plan of evangelism that's going to pour out of you. It's going to be even greater. You're going to get a download this year for global. This is, uh, I don't know if this, I haven't seen this at all, but I just felt the Lord said that 
Something he spoke to you 27 years ago is now going to take root and take fruit. And so, Lord, we speak yeah. that yeah. over yeah. them right now. Yeah. Amen. Jesus. And I just feel like, um, you know, I heard the scripture. There are many teachers, but not many fathers, not many mothers. And the Lord just spoke to me and he said that the highest representation on the earth like it is in heaven of a governmental body is actually a family because the Trinity is a family. He's a father. He's a son. He's a Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit and in his image he created the male and female out of the very essence of who he is. And I feel that you are to carry this revelation of all the families of the earth will be blessed through faith in the one true God and to bring this revelation of a kingdom global family to the earth. And I, I feel like it's, it's even beyond sometimes what we can ask or think, but it works everywhere. It works everywhere. And Father, we bless yeah. the revelation that they carry because it is, um, uh, it's not empty words of man's wisdom but it's demonstrated in their own home. And we bless them and we receive their gifts. Amen. 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 Let's give them a hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ruthie, Ruthie, come. Folks, uh, let's give uh, our host here and Wesley and Stacy a big hand. What a pleasure. <clears throat> Let me give you a little bit of background. Uh, we, we have known Wesley and Stacy for quite some time, but we got to know them recently. And we love the prophetic anointing with the apostolic twist that they carry. And that is what is coming to the church worldwide, the connection, the reconnection between the apostolic and the prophetic. Because when those two are disconnected, you either have the salsa picante or the burrito. Okay, and if you try to eat the burrito without the salsa picante, you get stuck. That's the apostolic. If you just go salsa picante all the time, you need something more solid in your stomach. So God is bringing that together. And that's how we felt linked to them. And tonight we have dinner with the leaders here. And I said, I'll tell you, birds of one feather, they fly together. They are like you. So what we would like to do before opening the word, God has given us an anointing for entire families to be safe. You see, the devil tells us if you get saved and you pray long enough, maybe some members of your family shall be saved. But the Bible is so strict. It says, believe in the Lord Jesus and you and your family shall be saved. There is not one two punch. It's all part of the same punch. When you believe in the Lord, salvation comes to your household. They still have to confront the claims of Jesus. They still have to repent, but you are carrying the ball. You are playing local. You have the cheerleaders. And that's an anointing that God in his great mercy has given to our family. I honor my wife as my best friend, my personal intercessor. We have been married for 52 years. God has given us four daughters who are married and they marry four wonderful men and they cooperate with each other and they gave us 12 grandchildren. The youngest one is seven, the oldest one is 27. They are all walking with God, on fire for God, transforming elementary school, universities. Why? Why not? Why not? 
And I realized that when we talk about family, there is pain that begins to rise up. But let me tell you, that is pain on the way out. That is pain that will come out of you today. So we want to pray a prayer of impartation. We want to pass on to you faith to believe that everybody in your family shall be saved. You may say, but Ed, I don't have the anointing. Don't worry, we do. We brought it here. You don't come here just to talk. You can here to demonstrate. You can here to impart. And so if you want it, you get it. God can turn on a dime, but you have to give him the dime. So if you would like this anointing, get up on your feet right now. Hold hands with the people next to you and get ready to receive. Get ready to receive. We pray this prayer and you pray with me. Father God, let it be known in heaven and on earth that today, here, right now, we, your church, your ecclesia, we submit to you. We oppose the devil. And every demonic force that has come against our families. And we say to them, our commander in chief, the Lord Jesus Christ, has defeated your commander in chief. We take authority, we oppose you. And in the name of Jesus, we command you, be gone, be gone for my family right now. Father God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we destroy every speculation, every lofty thing, blocking the knowledge of God. In our relatives, we pull it down in Jesus' name. And now, Holy Spirit, come, 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 baptize us. We receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Give a big hand and a big shout. And before you sit down, look at somebody in the eye and tell that person, I love you and there is nothing you can do about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now folks, the word that I have for you, please take your seat. I love about prophetic conferences because they don't care about the schedule. You know, I got a memo that says you should be done by 8.40. Well, I got the pulpit at 8.49. So, but let me tell you, I'm not a long-winded preacher, okay? I'll do it in the time allotted. But let me explain how God uses me and my wife. Some people have it. Dramatic anointing. They touch people and they fly in 10 different directions. That's a gift from God. I mean, you know, I have people that go like this and the entire section of the stadium disappears. That's an anointing. You know, that demonstrates. The way the anointing works in my case, I can see a spiritually strongholds in the minds of people. I can see them in families, in clusters. And so when I see a stronghold, I use the word of God, I quote the scriptures, I teach, and when you hear me say, listen to the Holy Spirit, at that moment, you listen to the Holy Spirit. Because at that moment, something is about to explode. And that the stronghold that held you back will disappear. In my book and in this booklet, I teach that the stronghold is a mindset. Say mindset. 
impregnated with hopelessness, say hopelessness, that forces you to accept as unchangeable, say unchangeable, situations that are contrary to the will of God. It's not the will of God that your marriage fails. It's not the will of God that your kids uh, rebel. It's not the will of God that you go broke. But we try, we try, we fail, and then eventually we become hopeless. So strongholds should never be remodeled. They have to be destroyed. So when I say listen to the Holy Spirit, at that moment, the impartation goes. There is a difference between teaching and imparting. Teaching hits your mind and trickles to your heart. Impartation hits your heart and changes your mind. And that's the anointing that I have tonight. When I say you are being imparted, all of a sudden, something changes. Don't try to understand it. It's like marriage. Just enjoy it. I mean... When you promise before God and these witnesses to be a good spouse, did you know anything about marriage? Zero. But why did you say, yes, I do? Because you wanted it so badly that you said, whatever it takes, I will do it. So listen to the Holy Spirit now. So let me put this in perspective. We have the privilege with Ruth to lead a network of about 7,500 influencers all over the world. These are men and women that are changing cities, nations, and so forth. We are so blessed to have here Sonia and Linda Lara. Would you stand up? They are from San Jose. God has used them mightily. I tell a little bit their story. People like them, that network is touching quite a few number of people there. But some time ago, the Lord spoke to us and told us, refocus on California. Because the way California goes, so will the nation. So through a series of divine encounters with uh, Bill Johnson and Chris Balloton and, um, and Danny Silk and Cheyenne and Sean Bowles, we agreed that we will continue to minister all over the world, but we will refocus on California, and we will create, you know, through our positioning in the state, a backbone from Reading all the way to Los Angeles and beyond, you know, where ecclesias, I'll explain a little bit later that, local churches would spring up in homes all over the place. So last... October, at the conference that Wesley referenced to, uh, those gentlemen, plus Lauren Cunningham and others, we came together and we did a social media broadcast. You know, we cross-posted on our Facebook pages and upwards of a million people, you know, participated, dedicated their homes and so forth and began to open up the heavens. It's no coincidence that two weeks later, Kanye West declared himself, you know, as a minister and began to do that. I'm not taking the credit for that. I'm just telling you I'm the donkey that carried Jesus. You know, I am donkey, but no ordinary donkey. Why? Because when you activate the church, the church is the only institution that has a branch in every neighborhood and it should have an agent in every block. Could you do that? So now on June 12, we are going to do a second broadcast from Reddit. You know, Bill is presiding and Chris are presiding that way. Then on August the 7th, another one from uh, Pasadena with Che and Sean. And then, and you have this uh, brochure here, on August the 26th, we are having our major conference in Monterey, and the climax of the conference is another broadcast that will connect upwards of 2 million people dedicated their home, their workplace, their school, as a place where the presence and the power of God will be present all the time. 
So those are not just ideas, those things are happening. But today over dinner, the Lord showed me a piece that was missing. You see, the prophetic, we usually uh, connected to words of encouragement and consolation, and that's very important, that the pastoral dimension of the prophetic. Or we connected to the office of the prophet that will hear a word and will give it to the church. But I am what is called a phenomenological theologian. A theologian that looks at phenomena, looks at things that happen in the Bible, the way a lawyer looks at evidence and builds a case. And I want to explain to you why this gathering, from my perspective, is so important. The name of your city. Cities are named and they have a destiny with a name. The name of your city is Saint Mary. Mary, the mother of Jesus. We have no quotes preaching about Joshua and Gideon and all the giants. But because we have an anti-Catholic bias, we never praise the mother of Jesus. We never talk about Mary. And the Bible was very clear. She will be the most blessed of all the women. She was the one that God entrusted the secret where he was going to disembark in a world where there was no one following God. She was the one that exposed herself to be stoned to death because that was a penalty for fornication. And that's why she was, you know, legally speaking. And she was the one that received a seed that later on gave birth to something extraordinary. It's no coincidence, and I learned this today over dinner, that Paul Cain is buried here. I mean, what is the significance of that? But let me take you back to an example in the Old Testament where a prophet has been dead for many years to the point that his bones were dry and the grave was open and somebody stumbled and dumped a stiff on it and the moment he touched the bones, boom! The dead person came alive. What about the shadow of Peter healing people? What about Paul's sweaty garments delivering people? So there are deposits that happen when the anointing is transferred. And it's no coincidence, if I understand correctly, Paul died about a year ago, okay? Mary got pregnant, and within a year, something came into evidence. And so I believe that God among other things, I'm not a prophet, I'm just an apostle looking at the evidence. God is using you to reconnect the prophetic with the apostolic so that the frustration that prophets experience will be minimized because the end of the story is not another prophecy. The end of the story is the transformation of nations. I mean, the honeymoon suite is exciting, but the real permanent joy comes in the delivery room. And that's what we are talking about. So I want to bring to your attention three instances when a prophet or a company of prophets connected with apostles or emerging apostles and the church began to expand. The first time was when Paul is still considered illegitimate because he was not one of the 12. He was recruited by Barnabas secretly. He was teaching in, uh, in Antioch, and the church in Jerusalem did not consider Antioch to be legit because these guys ate pork, they didn't wash their hands, they didn't get circumcised, and they were doing all those things in Jerusalem. And there is Paul and Barnabas doing such a great job that the believers are called Christians for the first time in Antioch. Then a prophet by the name of Agabus, actually it's a company of prophets, but they, it singled out Agabus. And Agabus gave a prophecy that a big famine was coming. 
and that eventually came. And that prompted Paul and Barnabas, who were not recognized as apostles yet, to take a collection and take the money to Jerusalem. And money talks, and a lot of money talks loud. And the church in Jerusalem that was very proud and couldn't care less for the church in Antioch, all of a sudden they received this bonanza coming from, from the Gentiles. And they say, and by the way, we have some rumors that you have something going on there. Tell me about it. And it was that prophetic word by Agabus that prompted Paul and Barnabas to go to Jerusalem, and later on he told the story in the epistles to the Galatians, saying, when I went to Jerusalem, the super apostles didn't teach much because they were still around the temple, but they agreed and they gave me the right hand of fellowship for me to go to the Gentiles. That apostolic intersection, that prophetic intersection, with the emerging apostle laid the foundation for the council of Jerusalem in Acts chapter 15, where eventually all the grand pubas got together and James says, it seems right to the Holy Spirit and us that the Gentiles, you know, are okay being saved. You see the connection? When the prophet connected with somebody that was apostolic, it opened a new panorama. Wow. Now fast forward to chapter 11. And what happened there? Chapter 13. There were teachers and prophets in Antioch, but no apostles. Why? Because an apostle may pastor a church, but pastoring a church doesn't make you an apostle. What makes you an apostle is getting out of the church building into the nation. And then a word came from God. We don't know how it came, but it was a prophetic word. And he said, set aside Barnabas and Saul for the ministry to which I have commissioned them. And at that moment, Paul and Barnabas become apostles because a prophetic word activated them. Fast forward to chapter 21. By then, Paul has filled with the gospel everything from beginning in Jerusalem and round about to Illyricum. That's Croatia. And I have no more room where to go here. I'm looking for a place in Spain, right there. But Paul is still a Jew of Jews. The Jews have his number. They want him in Jerusalem. And now you go to chapter 21 and Agabus, the prophet, shows up again. And he takes Paul's belt and he wraps himself up. And he says, the man whose belt belongs to will be bound and take in prison and do all these. And people began to cry, no, don't let it happen. And Paul said, hey, guys, chill down. <laughs> chill down. I'm willing not only to suffer, I'm willing to be crucified, to be killed for Jesus. The prophecy was not for the audience. The prophecy was for Paul. You will suffer. You have a choice. And because of that prophetic word, Paul appealed to Caesar so that the Jews will not be able to hold him back and he will have to be shipped off to Rome from where he established the epicenter of Christianity in the Gentile world. So you see the connection between a prophet that speaks into the life of an apostle, an apostle that responds to that prophetic word, and it's not about feel better, somebody hates you, but God will restore you, you are broke, God will give you the money. Those prophecies are okay, but they are vanilla prophecy. I'm talking about changing California. And then, you know, when we realize that we are seated around the table, that the name of this city is St. Mary, that something is here. There is an embryo in this place. Now what we are doing with Bill and Chris and Danny and Sean and others, all of a sudden brings the prophetic dimension to it. The prophetic dimension. 
Not as something that will absorb things, but something that will cross-fertilize it, going all over the place. And that's why I speak to those of you that are prophets, that have been ignored and abused and pushed around and treated like if you are, if you have the coronavirus. I said to you, the Lord is opening your eyes to the apostolic, to the mission. Prophecies, the ultimate goal is transforming nations. And that's when we reconnected with Wesley and Stacy, and we saw how anointed they are in, pro in the prophetic, but also how apostolic they are in their connections. I said, Lord, this is the key that you're giving in our movement to model how prophets and teachers, prophets and apostles will work together honoring each other. You see, Jesus preached time and again about the prophets, as the prophets said. On the day of Pentecost, Peter quoted the prophet. Paul quotes the prophet. The prophetic was the known. The unknown was the apostolic. And that's why it's so important to connect these two. And I do declare, if I were a prophet, I will quiver and shake and bring a record and say, and thus says the Lord. But because I am an apostle, I will say, God has chosen this city and this Shiloh company to be the firstborn of that connection between the apostolic and the prophetic so that we will have the fullness of Christ in the heavenly places. Thus says the Lord. If you look at this prophetic word, would you read it with me? Okay, let's read Isaiah 58, 12. Read it. One, two, three. Those from among you will rebuild. You will raise up the age-old foundations. And you will be called the repairer of the bridge, the restorer of the streets in which to dwell. Listen to the Holy Spirit and read that verse in your mind. Faith comes by hearing or reading what? The word of God. It says that you, that's you, say that's me. You will rebuild what is ruined in California. You will raise up the age-old foundation. You will repair the breaches in society. And you will restore the streets in which we live. And if there was a season when California needed to have its streets restored, this is the season. But this is not the theory. Sonny and Linda, they are from San Jose. They turned their local church into an ecclesia. Once a month, after the offerings and the announcements and the worship music, they take the church to the street. They knock on doors and they tell people, you couldn't come to church, but the church came to your house. What can we do for you? Can we mow the lawn? Can we paint the house? Can we babysit the kids? Can we cook a meal? And these folks planted an ecclesia, a church, in what was the roughest neighborhood in San Jose, the park where the gangs were birthed, and today is one of the safest places we have in San Jose. Why? Why not? Somebody says, I will rebuild what is ruined. I will raise up not another church building, although I'm all for church building. I will raise up the ecclesia, which I'll talk about in a moment, I will repair what is broken, and this place will be safe. Not too far from there is Valley Christian Schools. All of these testimonies are in my book, Ecclesia, and there are documentaries, about 15 minutes long documentaries on this collection of five documentaries. Valley Christian Schools is considered to be most likely the number one school in America, Christian or secular. Wow. Just to give an idea, we have put over a thousand experiments on the International Space Station. 
We are the only high school I know that has a research and development department. Our school beat major universities for the Expo Prize, which has to do with exploring the bottom of the ocean, and got the prize of a, almost a million dollars because our kids apply incredible spiritual insight to math and science and beat the big guns. So our school is a dream. Our campus is over a $150 million campus. I mean, our football stadium is NFL standard. Our swimming pool is Olympic. Our baseball diamond is incredible. But the Lord spoke to the leader, Dr. Doherty, and told him, my justice is not justice until it becomes social justice. You cannot have this Christian ghetto here. You don't know, have everybody who is somebody in, in Silicon Valley send their kids, and the public school is broke. Take care of the public school. So Dr. Doherty then arranged, we have a class, prayer evangelism class, which I have a book by that name, where you bless the people rather than blast them, you fellowship with sinners rather than avoid them, you minister to them rather than judge them, and then and only then you open your big mouth and you proclaim the kingdom of God has come. So then Dr. Dorothy was led to pick the worst school in the public school district, a school that was on probation, they approached the principal and they said, we would like to provide what you cannot afford, a computer lab, music classes, you name it. The guy says, well, we have a problem. What's the problem? You are a Christian school and, you, and, and we are public school. You cannot talk about God. Dr. Dorothy said, don't worry, we won't. But he thought we're going to bring God. And then every week, you know, a bus load of seniors and juniors went and they blessed the people, they taught the people, they mentored the people. On the second year, that school came out of probation. Wow. On the third year, became the number one in the district. Right. Now the school superintendent, and you don't get to be a school superintendent by coming to prophetic conference. You're usually, you know, a very seasoned bureaucrat. You know how to play the game. He shows up on campus and asks Dr. Doherty, what is the magic? And I tell people, show them Rachel, but then turn the lights off and sneak Leah in the bed. Because, you see, Rachel wanted the wife. God wanted the nation. You see... People want what will satisfy them. God looks beyond the honeymoon. He looks to the delivery room. So Dr. Doherty explained to him, and all of this is on the video and on the book. He says, you know, it's like a coin. It has two sides. One side is excellence. Look at our music conservatory. We are the only high school, Christian high school, to ever march on the Rose Parade. I mean, we have won every distinction you can imagine. Took him to the gym. Look at all the prizes we won. Said, yeah, I see, I see, I see. It. That's Rachel. What's the other side? Oh, the other side is God. And the guy almost cast. Oh, no, no. We can do it. Yes, we can. Because God led Dr. Doherty to change the mission statement from Judeo-Christian values, which is dead on arrival in the public school, to the virtues and beliefs of the founding fathers as expressed in the Declaration of Independence that all men are created equal, blah, blah, blah. What educator can argue with that? So he said, well, but you cannot talk about God. We won't talk about God. But now tell us what is your biggest problem. And he says, well, one of my biggest problems are freshmen that are gang members. They are on drugs. They are dealing drugs. They failed every subject, and I cannot kick them fast enough. What can I do? So Dr. Doherty calls for a prayer meeting. Who is at that prayer meeting? Sonny and Linda Lara. And they, and they are told, you cannot do a Christian program on campus. 
But Sony, that was three person by the devil, but drafted by the Lord okay, into his team. He knows every play on the devil's book. And he knows every play on God's book. They created a program called the Firehouse. Say Firehouse. This is a program on campus that the student to be admitted has to have four F. If you have three F, you are not bad enough. Go get another F and then come back. And, and these are the ones that the principal doesn't know what to do with. And they send them to Sonny and Linda and Anita and the team there. That is an ecclesia. The first thing they do, they feed them because most of those kids come from broken homes. Then they help them with their self-image. And then they begin to teach them. How many years have we been doing this, Sonny? All the others. The eight years. And those kids have graduated with B pluses, A, A pluses. They have gotten uh, scholarships. They are going to universities. And as a result of that, I haven't even begun to tell you. The whole public school campus is open to us. And we have seen close to 5,000 decisions for Christ in the public school system. And many of those, and it's getting better, are being baptized in the public school swimming pool with the okay of the district. Why? Why not? Yeah, stand up. These are the folks. Look at this. Sonny and Linda. Yeah. yeah. But it all began when they understood Valley Christian is not a school, it's a church. But not a traditional church, it's an ecclesia. I have the honor to be on the board as the chaplain. I, along with Dr. Dorothy, we commission every board member as an elder, every principal and assistant principal as an ordained minister. And in a moment, I'm going to show you a video clip when we commission 297 teachers and teachers aides as ministers of education. And now everybody there is praising the Lord, baptizing people, leading people to the Lord. We get Muslim, Buddhist, Hindus, agnostics safe there, and they come to the Lord. Why, why not? Why not? But it doesn't stop there. Just go 50 miles north to Vallejo. California, first city to declare bankruptcy. And there, a businessman was as disoriented as Adam might have been on Mother's Day. He knew that there was something else, but he didn't know what it was. He always felt a call to the ministry, but he felt like an ATM machine. Anytime the pastor touched him was for cash. And this guy had a, 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 a transportation company, a big one. He moves over a million students every year. But he came to a conference where I'm teaching on anointed for business. And I'm showing that the first person filled with the Holy Spirit in the Bible was an artisan. That the heroes of the faith, they were all called by God in the marketplace to do a job in the marketplace. And none of them quit their jobs to do God's work. That Jesus was a managing partner of a family-owned business and so forth. And then at the end of the seminar, God led me to invite the pastors to kneel down and ask forgiveness of the so-called layman for not having considered them peers in ministry. Do you realize that Paul would have been a synagogue writer if he had not met Aquila and Priscilla who led him to the marketplace? That's why pastors listen to the Holy Spirit. There are Aquilas and Priscillas in your sphere of influence and you have to release them to the marketplace. So when we knelt down, this happened in Oakland at Pastor David Kitely uh, congregation, and we asked forgiveness. Michael Brown was seated there, and his heart melted. 
And she said, Lord, I have come home. I am a minister. I am a minister in the marketplace. So he went back to his company, opened the door of the ballroom, and invited the Lord Jesus to come in because we misapply Revelation 3.20. Jesus says, I'm standing at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in. And we say, that's the door of the human heart. No, that is the door of a building that believers went in and they never invited Jesus to come in with them. That's what happened on Monday. You go to work, you go to school, you take Jesus in your heart, but you don't bring him into the building. And then he installed the father as the chairman of the board, Jesus as the CEO, and the Holy Spirit as the legal counsel. And with that team, you can never lose. And then in those days, Vallejo had declared bankruptcy. And when a city declares bankruptcy, who suffer the most? The people that are down and almost out. And so he adopted the schools and told the principals, anything you need, pick up the phone, I'll pay for it. He built incredible things for the schools. The spiritual climate began to change, but his revenue grew from two million to $14 million the moment that he made God the head of that company that now is an ecclesia. Then when it hit $14 million, a venture capitalist group tried to buy it because it was a gold mine. But God says, don't sell up, sell down. Sell it to your workers for no money. There is something called ESOP, Employee Stock Option Purchase where you let people buy it for no money and they increase the value of the company. And now the company hit $21 million in revenue. And they realized that the most at-risk group of people in Vallejo were African-Americans released from prison because 78% of them were back in prison within three years. So what did they do? They went to talk to the sheriff and to the probation officer in charge of re-entry. And they said, would you let us uh, train them as professional drivers? Because when California legalized marijuana, as a result of that, many professional drivers are having their licenses suspended and canceled because marijuana doesn't leave their system like other drugs. And so there is a long line of companies like hotel shuttle drivers that they need drivers. The sheriff says, you don't know what you are asking. These guys are criminals. They have no social skills. I mean, they say, just let me try. But I'll tell you what he said. I'll give you the 10 worst cases. If you succeed with one, come back and talk to me. All 10 graduated, all 10 found a job, none of them went back. This is the seventh year that everybody released from prison in Solano County entrusted to Michael Transportation Company that is an ecclesia, has graduated, found a job, and no one has gone back to prison. And that has caught the attention of our governor, who is no Sunday school teacher, Because he sees that there is something here and there is a good shot that this program will go to all 58 counties with the state footing the bill. Why? Why not? So because the time is evaporating and tomorrow morning I have a couple hours to really go deep on this. I want to show you now a video clip that synthesizes What is a church? You see, when we think of a church, and don't get me wrong, I love buildings. I believe in buildings. Just being here, Pastor, and seeing the excellence in everything. I said, I would love to see 10,000 buildings like this. But the church is not the building. We confuse the building with the church because King James, that was a very perverted, depraved king, didn't like the translation of the New Testament where William Tyndale translated Ecclesia as assembly 
because he, as the head of the Anglican Church, he controlled the nation through the bishops that he appointed. And if you saw the movie Braveheart, you have a good example of that. And so he commissioned a new translation, but he forbid the scholars to translate ecclesia as assembly and told them you should translate it as church. And by then church was a building. And that's where we went wrong. And then about 400 years later, when the Azusa Street revival came, and there were in one year alone, two million people came to the Lord filled with the Holy Spirit. They were planting churches right and left all over that were not organized churches. They needed theology, and they couldn't go to Bible schools, Pentecostals, because they didn't exist or they were very small. So the devil introduced the annotated the Scofield Bible with the notes that doesn't believe in the gift of the Spirit, doesn't believe in victorious eschatology, and Pentecostal who received the fullness of the Holy Spirit to go to every nation, yeah. bought into the junk that everything has to get worse for the Lord to return. But we are changing that now. And when people realize we are the church, and when Jesus said, I will build the church, he said, I will build you, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against you, and you will tread upon all power of the evil one. So let me, let me show you this short video, and then I will, I will pray the impartation, and I will deal it to Wesley to wrap it up. But I want you to watch this because this is the essence. And tomorrow morning, I'll give you the rest of the teaching. Okay, let's watch it. What happens in church every Sunday is extraordinary. The word is preached, people worship God. There is repentance, reconciliation. Nothing comes a close second to that. But what must we do for that that happens once a week to happen every day out there in the marketplace. In this video that you're about to watch, I show you why, how, when, and where to do that. Watch it as a pastor, you will be inspired. As a church member, you will be empowered. And the kingdom of God will manifest itself where the gates of Hades are currently ruling. So let's go now into the heart of the book that is sort of a manual for the principles that are being presented. Let me take you from the known to the unknown. These are very intriguing questions that gave birth to this book. Number one, if the church is so important, why did Jesus speak only twice about it? Furthermore, why is it that there are no instructions or a command on church planting in the New Testament, as important as church planting is? How does the church today compare to the ecclesia in the New Testament? Look at the metrics of the ecclesia in the New Testament. Number one, members devoted to their teacher's leading. Number two, individual and corporate prosperity to meet the needs inside and outside of their circles. Number three, daily, daily numerical growth. Number four, ongoing and expanding favor with outsiders. And number five, signs and wonders, what we call here divine downloads. It was definitely a different kind of church, or it looked different. It was always people, never buildings. It was vibrant, expansive, operating 24-7, unstoppable capacity for growth. It set the agenda rather than being an item on somebody else's agenda. So the question is, why such low performance and little social relevance today? Could it be that we have confined to four words once a week what is meant to operate 24-7, all over the city, in the marketplace. You see, the other side of the church is the kingdom of God. They go together. 
And when Jesus launched the church, he described the kingdom as leaven, light, water, salt. Leaven in a jar doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Light that is blocked creates darkness. Water that doesn't run becomes putrid. Salt in a shaker doesn't do any good to the meal. So we need to take this into society. Is there something that we have not tapped into yet? And if so, what is it? I mean, when Jesus introduced the ecclesia, his intention all along was to co-opt an existing secular institution and impregnate it with his kingdom DNA. Let me explain this by taking you back to the genesis of the ecclesia. There were three main institutions in Israel during New Testament days. Number one, the temple. Number two, the synagogue. Number three, the church, the ecclesia, the word translated church in our Bibles. The temple was a religious place where people met with representatives of God, the priest. The synagogue was another religious place where God's people met with each other. But the ecclesia, the ecclesia secular, was a Roman institution where it was an assembly of people deputized by the emperor to introduce and implement the laws of the empire. And the function of that ecclesia was to teach the language and the culture of Rome until everything and everyone walked, talked, and acted like Rome. Very interestingly, Jesus didn't say, I will build my temple or I will build my synagogue, but he said, I will build my ecclesia. Basically, what he was implying, there already exists an ecclesia, a secular one, which is governed by evil forces. They are called the gates of Hades. But I am releasing a new ecclesia, a group of people, because ecclesia means an assembly of people. And when these two meet, mind will win. Therefore, when the disciples heard the word ecclesia, they didn't need much explanation because the frame of reference was a secular entity already in existence in, a, in the marketplace, except that this new ecclesia was going to be Jesus' ecclesia. Pay attention to this. He co-opted a major institution that was operating in the marketplace with imperial authority and infused it with God's kingdom DNA. Number two, he went beyond that. He also co-opted the conventus, conventus civium romanorum, the correct word. And that meant that when Roman citizens met anywhere, the power and the authority of the emperor was with them. Isn't that what Jesus said about his church? When two or three of you get together, I am there in your midst. But it goes beyond that. He also co-opted the term apostle. Today is a religious term. But in Jesus' day, it described the admiral in charge of a fleet loaded with building materials and all kinds of people with building expertise, carpenters, plumbers, engineers, architects, that they were sent out to build in a new territory, a city that looked like Rome. So my friends, reflect on this. He co-opted the ecclesia, he co-opted the conventus, and he co-opted the office of apostle. And that's why when you are commissioned as a minister in the marketplace, you are one of those ships taking building material to establish the kingdom of God in new territory. In the Bible, the ecclesia was a building-less, mobile people movement designed to operate 24-7 in the marketplace to impact everybody and also everything. By selecting the ecclesia model over the temple or the synagogue, Jesus chose an agency better suited 
to succeed in the marketplace because his ultimate objective was to see nations discipled by inserting the leaven of his kingdom into their social fiber through the ecclesia, which is people. Now, I'm going you to read out loud with me this uh, paragraph because it encapsulates the whole concept. Jesus' ecclesia was not meant to be a sterile, sanitized holding tank into which his disciples were to store in frozen isolation converts fish out of a turbulent and doomed sea to await the arrival of the refrigerator ship that will transfer them to a heavenly port for final processing. No, instead, his ecclesia, whether in the embryonic expression of the conventus or in a more expansive version, was designed to inject the leaven of the kingdom of God into the dough of society so that first people, then cities, and eventually nations would be disciples. My friends, without God, we can't do it. But the interesting thing is, without us, God won't do it. That's why your participation is so important. And let's take inspiration from the Apostle Paul. In Acts 19.11, we read, And all who live in Asia heard the word of the Lord. And God was performing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul. Who performed the miracles? God. Whose hands did he use? Paul. Where is God? Here. Where is Paul? He's not here. Who is here today? You and I. God wants to use you to perform extraordinary miracles. How did they work? It says the Bible that handkerchief or aprons were carried from Paul's body to the sick. He was working, making tents, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out. Why? Because Paul was a minister in the marketplace. In other words, whatever instrument touched Paul became a vehicle for transformation. Whatever you do and touch, is potentially a vehicle for transformation. What does that mean today? Well, Jesus go up to the ecclesia. He assembled people, even in as little as two or three in the conventus form. He also co-opted the office of apostle. And today you are part of a fleet of ships that are going to take God's kingdom to regions where the kingdom is unknown. My friend, without God we can, but with God we certainly can. Amen. You see, Valley Christian School is an ecclesia. That transportation company is an ecclesia. That local uh, church is an ecclesia. There are ecclesias in your city the police station, the school district, uh, shopping malls. We need to go there as the church. And tomorrow morning we'll expand on that. But let's close with a prayer before Wesley comes. I, that's why this event that we have coming up in August is so catalytic. Because we will introduce a medical doctor that discovered a connection between a sleep apnea and high attention deficit disorder and learning disabilities. And a scores of people are being healed because a medical doctor who is a minister inherited uh, received a leaf from the tree of life. You're going to hear from people that are transforming businesses all over. But above all, and after our dinner today, I believe that Santa Maria, Saint Mary, will play a pivotal role, and the prophetic and the apostolic will come together. But now the question is, where do you begin? And you begin by saying yes to Jesus tonight. I don't understand the details, but I understand that there is something more. 
And if you would like to receive this anointing, I would like to pray that prayer. When we are done, all the PowerPoints that I'm using today and tomorrow, I'll be glad to give them to you. Just go to the book table there, sign up, and you will get them. I want you also to meet Jill here. She's on our team, and she will guide you about the conference in August. I mean, we're going to have Wesley and, and uh, Stacy, hopefully others as well there. We'll see what will happen. But now comes the moment for you to give your hands to Jesus. God wants to perform extraordinary miracles. My wife wrote this book, Food, Family, and Fun. And it's disguised as a recipe book, but basically she teaches that you should cook under the anointing. You should chop the onions in the name of the Lord. You should fry the hamburger in holy oil. You should bring it to the table, you know, a son to the Lord without telling the unbelieving members that they are eating holy food. And they begin to have power encounters and they get saved and they come to the Lord. Because when you look for an example of a church meeting in the book of Acts, you are looking at the gathering where people are eating together. That's the heart of the ecclesia. It doesn't negate the value of the larger meetings. In no way that should replace the Sunday when we all come together. But Monday through Sunday, we should do ecclesia where we are. So would you lift up your hands to the Lord and say with me, Dear Lord, I give you my life and prophetically, I give you my hands. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Renew my mind. Change my paradigms. And humbly, I ask you, give me the anointing for extraordinary miracles. That what I touch, what I do, what I write about will carry anointing that lives will be transformed. I ask you by faith. I receive it by faith. And I will put it to work by faith. Thank you, Lord. Keep your hands up. Father, now, with the apostolic authority you have entrusted to me, I seal these and I commission them in the name of Jesus. I commission them to begin to perform miracles in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's give them a great big hand. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dr. Ed Silvoso. Amen. You know, we want to receive an offering tonight. And you can just be seated for one second. Just be seated for one second. There should be off- offering envelopes there. And uh, let's put the uh, 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 slide up <clears throat> for the um, text to give and all the rest. If you're watching online, <clears throat> think of a way to get uh, an offering here. And we'll make that flow through. But I told you, uh, you're gonna, tomorrow morning, you're going to hear the most strategic stories. Because I've heard a bunch of them already that you don't know yet. You don't know what he's going to say. And um, the Lord is using him for governmental change, massive financial economic change in the earth, things that are beyond comprehension. And I believe that Dr. Ed and Ruth are so strategic and we need to get behind them. As much as we can mobilize They are changing the mind and understanding of the church worldwide. And so uh, let's do this tonight. Let's give. We want to give a a dynamic gift to them because they are seeing transformation and change. They're changing the world. And so if you could do that, if you could mobilize and and, and just, you know, I mean, give out of your, you know, Till it hurts. I said, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) that's it. 
Let's do it. And uh, we're going to see a lot more people brought into this great understanding. So, Father, right now, bless each one as we are moved and motivated to get behind this dramatic Transform Our World movement with the 7,500 leaders, influencers, and growing that are changing the world. Amen and amen. Okay, we're going to receive that. And if you are not registered at the school for tomorrow, you can even just register for just the morning, okay? You, want, you don't want to miss this. I mean, the conference that uh, they put on is in Monterey, and you have to get hotels and drive, and it's, I mean, you've got him here tomorrow morning. If you're from Santa Maria area, you know, I don't know how you're going to do it, but you're going to somehow just get out of what you were doing and be here. 9.30. Till 12.30, we've got two complete sessions with a break in the middle, and uh, you're going to hear incredible stories, what's happening real time right now with some of the top criminals of the world. Top criminals of the world. The, the largest gang cultures of drugs and everything in the world right now, you're going to hear what, how God is breaking into these places. You don't want to miss this tomorrow morning. 9.30, be here. God bless you. Have a great night.